I'm going to first the question with a point that I think is part of the answer. Humility and pridelessness. Yes. Both of them are mentioned in that verse as two different features of the principle of Nishta, the principle of um, developing the qualities of a Vaishnava that is conducive to practice of Krishna consciousness. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that pridelessness is also included in humility. Yes, that's my understanding. So what is the distinction between humility and pridelessness that can say that there are two separate features in terms of definition or quality? To be honest, I'm not sure, Marge. I'm honestly not sure. I'll, I'll, if you have any thoughts. It keeps coming up in my mind. Yeah. Yeah, I've not read or heard anything. It's like yeah. you're saying humility in two different ways when you say pridelessness. Yeah. But then there is. Why is it mentioned twice? Yes. Yeah. I honestly don't. You really don't know. I don't believe that. No, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know much. But I think Vishabha has his hand up. Maybe he has heard something. I, let's just share one thing that may, that relates to this. So I was I was reading so I was reading um, before the class how my, my spiritual master dealt with this topic, and um, he was because in the actual I, I, I went back to the Chitam Charitamrita so um, Anti Lila chapter twenty text number twenty one where this Trinada P um, Sunichana verse is, is present, and I looked up this word so Amanina. Prabhupada translates it without being puffed up by false pride. And I remember that, and then before that, Sahishtuna, it says, with to it means, um, it's translated as with tolerance. And what I was reading before the class is that someone can be tolerant, but actually, they can also have false pride. So they can tolerate in the mood of, I'm much better than you, you're obviously ridiculous, and you're doing this stupid stuff, but I'm so great that I'm just going to ignore the, your, your poor behavior. So, so you can have a mood. You can, so one can practice the external mood of something and at the same time feel more and more pride, more and more, you know, more, and more that I'm actually greater. The fact that I'm not saying anything, even though you're wrong, means that I'm very, very special. So, yeah. So you can say, I, I'm, I'm proud, I'm so proud that I'm humble. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. I'm proud, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it seems to, at least in the translation by Prabhupada, the way that he actually defines this amanina, without being puffed up by false pride, without taking that sense of whatever you're doing to make you to take it and own it oneself, to feel that actually it's because I'm so great. In, me, in other words, I may do the activity, but I have to do the activity without taking the wrong mentality from, uh, without it, it, without it feeding the false ego. I guess you could say. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was it. There was something else I was going to say that just came. Related to that, but it's gone. It'll come back to me. But yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's any other questions, yeah, maybe is that we'll take your question and then maybe have to end. <laughs> so. um, my question was connected to this point that we might be making. Um, like sometimes we may start something may come into our life and we may start off. A somewhat gratitude, mm -hmm. and then that gratitude then develops into a subtle sense of pride. Yeah. So because we watered that so, because we thought it was gratitude, we live with them. We're mm -hmm. watering it, but actually we're watering that pride. Mm -hmm. So when we recognize it, sometimes there may be like we may be able to say words um, 
to kind of counteract it or remember what humility means. Mm -hmm. But it, it stays on the surface. It doesn't quite dig deep enough. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give when we recognize, wait, this wasn't a true quality. It was pride. What can we do in that situation? See, even the recognition is, is also part of the development of humility. Yeah, so you, maybe you just repeat the question. Oh, I'll, okay, I'll say it. So, yeah, the question was that sometimes we, we begin in spiritual life with gratitude. But then after a while, it may subtly shift. We may actually start to move to a different mentality. Where at first it was gratitude, but now I'm, I keep receiving. I think, actually, you know what? I deserve this stuff. I'm actually, it's really good. And so the question was, we, we may then say the right words. Oh, you know, you're, you're kind, Prabhu, I don't deserve it. But that's... It's on the surface that we're saying that we don't really feel it very deep down. So the question is, what could we do? So there's a few things that I would offer. The first thing is that the recognition of it is also a form of humility. Because if humility means truthfulness, and this is where it's subtle, it means that we're ready to recognize our not-so-good qualities. It means we're ready to recognize, and sometimes it's a bit uncomfortable or painful to look at our heart and say, you know what, I did that with the wrong motive. That wasn't, that wasn't good. Or, I should, or, or to recognize, you know what, I'm, feeling, I'm thinking very negatively of this person. Even, even they may have done something wrong. They may have done something wrong, but Marge put it beautifully. We hate the sin, not the sinner. You know? We make a distinction. We may recognize that that person, if they're doing something wrong, how, much mis how miserable their life must have been, or their life must be, for them to try and do all this kind of negative behavior towards me. How miserable they have to be. And if we see that, because no one who's truly happy goes around giving people a hard time. So the people who give us a hard time, even though they don't mean to, what they're actually showing us is just how unhappy they are, how truly unhappy they are. It's a real thing. But that vision, which relates to this first, it has to be practiced. Because what happens is the material lifestyle, it, 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 it's, a, it's a form of practice, it's a form of conditioning. But it conditions us to see everything superficially. But spiritual life is the opposite. We're being, we're being given a practice and a methodology to see everything very, very deeply. And then it, we change the way that we behave. You know? One other thing came to mind when you answered your question. And this is something I meant to share, but you know, at times I'll, I think it's important. This is also a danger for all of us. What happens in our spiritual life is as we, as we, as we continue the process, as we stay in, in devotional association, we actually get more facility. So you're a new bhakta, you're just new, right? So people may be a bit nice to you, but they all know, right, they're new, they don't really know anything. Then you get first initiation. Ooh, now you've got a spiritual name. You know, and everyone, everyone knows you've got, a, you've got a spiritual master, you've made vows, so, you know, Mataji, you know, Prabhu, it's, it's different. Then you get second initiation. Oh my God, I saw him on the altar. Well, I saw him on the altar, they were looking after the deity. On and on, right? So we get different things. As we get more facility in spiritual life, even subtle facility, we have to also become more humble. Where fall down occurs, it's when the hum is when the influence, the power, the facility, it becomes greater than the humility. So then, the same devotee who was wonderful before, now what happens is, as they're getting more facility, because we're not becoming more humble, we start to think, you know what, I deserve this facility. You know, actually, the reason why I'm getting more facility is because I'm so wonderful. And in other words, the, the exact disease that we're trying to get out of, i.e. the disease of pulling ourselves in the center and thinking that we're God, now that disease has now come up again. You see? And because the disease has come up again, now I think, you know what, I deserve it. And because I deserve it, I'm entitled to mistreat you if you don't give me what I, what, what I, what I deserve. Because after all, I'm so great. What I, this is the point I, I was wanting to share. What is so amazingly subtle, right? The point is, if you don't take the credit, if you don't, if you don't claim ownership of what Krishna does through you, you don't also have to deal with the karmic burden. But if I take the credit, if I say that that big project is because of me, then Krishna says, are you sure? Because he gives us chances. And it's like, no, 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 it is because of me. It's like, are you sure you want to do this? And the person insists, no, Krishna, I'm going to take all the credit. And Krishna's like, fine, there's a karma that's attached to that project. 
You take the credit, you also take the karma. And then what happens is, instead of being right and agile and able to move forward in our spiritual life, suddenly we feel that there's this weight on our spiritual life. And it's because we've, take, we've claimed ownership of something that belongs to Krishna. So the karma now weighs us down, and that's why we don't make progress properly. So again, we're sharing that because it's a science. If we understand, see, because if you just say to people, don't take the credit, people, they'll say yes. The villains will say yes, but they'll think, well, really, it's quite nice to take the credit, isn't it, really? You know, like that. And nothing's going to happen to me if I do it, right? So, no, big deal. But if as the villains know, if you take the credit for that, whatever karma is attached, you're going to have to carry that burden. It's like trying to run with, with some anvil or some heavy weight tied around your ankle. You won't be able to go anywhere. You know? And even more deeply, it's not necessary. Krishna is not like the conditioned living entities. He likes to glorify his devotees. He, he likes to shower his devotees with affection. So it's not like if we don't take the credit, we won't get any attention. He's like, no, no. You get attention from Krishna in the heart, guaranteed. Guaranteed. If you're sincerely serving, what is it? Um, it's so beautifully said. said, if the devotional service is unmotivated and uninterrupted, it completely satisfies what? The self. That's what Prabhupada actually translates for that verse. Devotional service should be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. Can you believe that? And it's Maharaj put it beautifully. The happiness of the devotee is Krishna's happiness. So the point is, if he is pleased, the joy you experience, it's, nothing can come close to it. So, when we don't follow properly, the only person we're, we're cheating is who? It's ourselves. And that's the entire thing of all the teachings, by the way. When, because Krishna is so selfless, when he gives a teaching saying, you do this, your benefit is for you. you. You follow this process, you'll benefit. You don't follow this process, you have to go through all the difficulties of the material energy that he doesn't want you to go through. That's the point. The point is that Krishna is loving and selfless. He's actually Bhakta Vatsal. Anyway, so that answer your question. Yeah. Okay, I think we'll have to stop. <laughs> we'll be, but we'll, we'll continue on maybe um, next session. It's very good. Bye. Bye.